I am Komla Adung. Thank you for joining me this morning. Our government has made available 100 million US dollars to enhance the country's coronavirus preparedness and response plan. The money is expected to go into resources, case management centers, surveillance mechanisms at the port of entries, provision of essential protective gears, and media education. With 57 cases tested negative in Ghana, the country still remains at risk of contraction after neighboring countries Burkina Faso, Togo, and Cote d'Ivoire confirmed cases. Addressing the nation last night, President Tekufuadu said government is working to ensure the protection of a Ghanaian. Our points of entry, such as our airports and land borders, continue to show satisfactory preparedness to screen all entrants into Ghana. The Ministry of Health has designated a quarantine facility that can hold infected persons. It is imperative that we step up our preparedness to ensure that beyond these initial satisfactory measures, we adopt a whole of Ghana approach in adequately preparing for a possible hit within our borders. In order to do so, at my prompting, the Minister for Finance has made available the CD equivalent of 100 million United States dollars to enhance our coronavirus preparedness and response plan. In the U.S., President Donald Trump has announced a ban on travelers to the United States from Europe during a televised address to the nation. The ban will be in place for the next 30 days in an attempt to slow the spread of the virus. Let's do some other stories now. And uh, a tragedy struck earlier yesterday at Sariba in Kumasi when a bus ran over a child and the driver was supposed to take to school. Four-year-old Aishetu is said to have uh, run behind the reversing Benz bus in a bid to board the vehicle. Police have arrested the driver to assist in investigations. Here is a Rastos Saridonko's report. The lifeless body of little Aishetu lies in a bedroom at a family house. Her eagerness to join her friends at the Happy Kids School at Sawaba was cut short in the early hours of Wednesday. This bus was supposed to pick her and her friends up for school. In the process of parking the vehicle, the reversing bus ran over her on the blind side of the driver. It took continuous shouts from onlookers to alert the driver of what was happening. Driver of the vehicle has been arrested by police. Inside the family house, mother of the little girl hugs her two remaining children in grief. <laughs> When they heard of the school bus, they went outside. I was in the house. She had gone behind the vehicle, and the bus ran over her. Her brother came in to tell me. Meanwhile, family members want police to release the body for burial. Reporting for Joy News, Erastus Asaridonko, Kumase. Now, government is dismissing claims that its One Village One Dam project is a failure. The NDC at a press conference in one of the dried up dams in Yendi described the initiative as a Trojan horse package to deceive electorates this year. Sami Jane Fee's communications officer. At the One Village One Dam promise is a Trojan gift, deceptive in appearance, and insincerely packaged to hoodwink the good, the good people of Northern Ghana for their votes. True to our words, the shoddy execution of these One Village, One Dam projects has amply vindicated our long-held position that the whole talk about One Village, One Dam by then-candidate Ekufuado was a ruse meant for electoral gain and nothing more. But Deputy Information Minister Pius Hajide has dismissed the claim insisting government is on course in the fulfillment of a promise. He first expressed surprise at the shift in the NDC's position. But 300 dams have been earmarked 
for construction. Over 200 of those have been completed and are operational. Others are at different stages of completion. If it's a dam, why is it dried up in the dry season? Constructing a dam is a process and not an event. But this dam they visited is one of those completed ones. That's their claim. Now, your election headquarters goes live today with a massive people-centered launch of our coverage of the 2020 elections. Now, the weight of the entire multimedia group will be on display at this launch as we bid to once again lead the way with the most comprehensive and people-centered coverage of our elections. The theme for our coverage is having an informed electorate. Head of a political desk, Evan Smith, outlines what to expect. The location for the launch tells its own story. We are doing it from the Accra Central Business District, mm -hmm. the forecourt of the AMA. That location is obvious. This is where you find the bread and butter issues that should drive an election. Yeah. The, the, the market women who have issues with children's education, mm -hmm. the economy, because the economy, the real Ghanaian economy is at Mokola. Yeah. And that's where you're going to yeah. be, uh, not the guys in suit and tie and in air condition. Um, <laughs> because they are the masses, you make that point. But you it's still... about putting them directly in contact with those who are seeking their vote. And let's hear whether those who are seeking their votes have the solutions for those issues. Hmm. Of course, this is your election headquarters on radio, television, and online. We'll be bringing you excerpts of that launch, which will be coming up at the AMA offices. They're also on our three language channel. We will be live from LECMA. All our platforms will have the launch. And uh, Daryl, I mean, it's a landmark process for us today as we begin to, you know, mark our coverage of the 2020 The, the 2020 elections, uh, do you remember the sleepless nights in 2016? I, I remember. Having to go around the country to report. Uh, we are bringing it back to you. The best ever coverage of elections. Of here course, on your election headquarters. But just before I go, arrive at live tips. Make sure the vehicle is fit before you make a long distance travel. Avoid driving if you are stressed or unwell. Slow down on wet roads and in bad weather. It is the most sensible option. Hashtag arrive alive. Have a good morning. Hello, good morning. Welcome to the Joy Business Report. Coming up this morning, total profits of banks hit 3.3 billion cities for 2019. Ahead, we have a report looking at what this means for confidence in the financial sector. Also coming up, Ghana Statistical Service says it is ready to conduct housing census, as it says June 15, for listing of structures. Also in the bulletin uh, this morning, use of disinfectants as a means of limiting the spread of the coronavirus on the rise. We'll speak to manufacturers. My name is Daryl Kwau, and this is your election headquarters. In our first story this morning, commercial banks in the country have again witnessed a significant increase in their earnings. Latest Bank of Ghana report proves total industry profits after tax for 2019 at 3.3 billion cities. George Raffi has more. The 3.3 billion Ghana City profits represents about 38% jump over what was reported in 2018. According to the Bank of Ghana, the strong earnings posted by the 23 banks in the country put together was due to the significant increase in profits from interest earning businesses as well as fees and commissions are stripping growth and expenses for 2018. The central bank in the same report noted that growth in key revenue lines outstripped the increase in expenditure, resulting in that strong profits for 2019. For some, this could be an indication that the much talked about confidence in the banking sector has indeed firmly stabilized a year after the Bank of Ghana completed cleanup of the sector. The report also highlighted an improvement in most areas of operations of the banks. One can talk about capital adequacy ratio, which measures the industry servicing position and its ability to absorb potential losses from credit and operational risk also going up significantly, while liquidity and financial indicators also saw a broad improvement. The banks also depended heavily on deposit mobilized to fund the operations for last year. From the 83.4 billion Ghana cities mobilized for last year, 99.6% were raised locally. They represent about 22% jump of what was recorded in 2018. The Bank of Ghana believes that these earnings can be strongly linked to regulatory reforms and the recent recapitalization of the sector, adding that the industry 
is now well positioned to undertake efficient financial intermediation to support the growth of the economy. The Ghana Statistical Service has set the first week of June to begin listing of all structures across the country as part of the 2020 Housing and Census Program. The 2020 Census, which is going to be digital-based according to the Statistical Service, will be an improved version of the previous one. Deputy Government Statistician David Combat, addressing the media in Accra, uh, gave some highlights of the program which will begin in June. We are preparing towards June. June 15th, we will start with the listing of structures in the communities. And it is going to be done in all communities in Ghana. All communities, and we start on the same day. The listing of structures will start on the 15th of May, of, of, of June. And on the 28th of June, is going to be a census date. And when we say a census date, if we had the capacity to enumerate everybody on that day, we will do that night of 28th, but we are not able to do that. Uh, because we are not able to do that, we would usually, you know, carry out some activities that will make the day uh, memorable. Uh, that night, we'll carry out activities. We'll get the fire service uh, to go out with the sirens in the local the villages, we'll get the gongong beaters to make noise, we organize record dances in some of the areas, you know, so that people can always refer to that night when there was an unusual noise, so that they can always refer to it. There's this census is a de facto uh, count census, but we want to enumerate people where they'll be found on the census night. The Ghana Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative has released its latest report which shows a lack of clarity on the relationship between the GMPC and Ghana Gas. The report pointed out a turf war between the two state agencies over who is superior. Presenting findings of the report, co-chair of the Ghana Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative, Dr. Steve Mantial, raised concerns about contributions of extractive industries to communities. Charles Aite has more. Co-chair of Ghana's chapter of the EITI, Dr. Steve Mantiel, stated that while disclosures on the management and use of extractive resources are vital in fostering an informed citizens' engagement on natural resource governance, Ghana's long-term objective of enhancing the development outcomes of the extractive sector will not be served if citizens do not capitalize on the reports to demand accountability and the needed policy and practice. You do. To determine that when I mortgage my forest, the livelihoods of my people for X amount of taxes and royalties, this is what I get. We don't do anything of the sort. For us, every money is money. The report further cited that international oil companies such as Anadaco, Eco Atlantic, Vital Upstream, and AGM, though met the threshold for inclusion in the report, failed to submit their templates and therefore did not participate in the exercise. Some aviation news next. The Minister of Aviation has revealed that Ghana is exploring a $10 million solar project with the Indian government for Ghana's airports. The adoption of solar energy for our airports is in line with the International Civil Aviation Organization's push for the use of more renewable energy sources in response to the threat of climate change. The Aviation Minister Kofiada revealed this when the Indian High Commissioner to Ghana paid a Kesi call on him. Sheila Tamaklu has more. Currently, India's Cochin International Airport, located in the state of Kerala, is the first solar power airport in the world. According to the Minister for Aviation, following a visit to India last year, government has begun negotiations on adopting similar solar energy sources at our airports. He spoke after a curtsy call from the Indian High Commissioner to Ghana. Team came down from here, invited us over. We went to see what was done there, and they brought their proposals, went around the airports and assessed them, and brought the cost and uh, also brought a uh, financing uh, facility from the Indian Exit Bank on what they could do. It's about uh, nearly $10 million that they want to use to convert all the airports to solar in Ghana. Of course, it would increase over time, for, but for now that's what they proposed. I think it's slightly over $10 million, just around that figure. And we've been able to share with the Minister of Finance, they are assessing that. Uh, if they do find it within the uh, the, the financial arrangements for the year, 
uh, would get the approval and would be able to get the uh, cabinet and parliament to uh, get that passed. Once that is passed, means all our airports will be converted to solar airports, and then they will reduce the cost. I think the cost, from what I hear, would probably go down by nearly 30 percent of what they're paying now. The Indian High Commissioner to Ghana also pledged their country's support for the project and Ghana's aviation industry. Because we are waiting for um, the concrete proposal to be approved and then to be financed under this uh, uh, scheme or under this proposal uh, uh, from the government of Ghana. So, um, uh, so these are some of the areas uh, which I discussed as uh, possible areas as of now um, with uh, Ghana. Um, but there could be many more areas. For Joy Business, Shleta Maklo reporting. Now, there appears to be a rise in the use of disinfectants to limit the spread of the coronavirus as awareness heightens. Now, as the World Health Organization has declared the coronavirus a pandemic, my colleague Alberta Bisu has been interacting with the head of brand development and activation of PZ Carson's Hafsa Ramantha Arthur to find out if her company can meet the growing demand in case of a possible outbreak. It has seeped in slowly within the Ghanaian market. Some have accepted it and are looking for the product to buy. Um, but gradually we realize that there's an increment in our sales. And actually it's fair to say that we have about doubled what we were selling before the outbreak started. What we recognize is that Ghanaians still think it's far away. A lot of people and so um, they're yet to get into the actual habits on a day-to-day -day basis of using an alcohol-based hand rub or sanitizer as is. But that's growing and we expect it to grow. What we've recognized in all of this is the habit of using on-the-go hand cleaning um, products is not yet caught on. It was high during Ebola, but then as soon as Ebola went away, we saw a significant dip in behavior. And we're hoping that through this, it will become a way of life more than a response to an epidemic of this nature. And what we're saying is that because the demand in Nigeria has shot up, and we have capacity within a certain framework to work as a factory, as a production hub, they are consuming a lot of it in Nigeria. And so even if we shipped, because of the port-related issues, you'd realize that it will take a very long time. And as we uh, conclude this morning, just to give you an idea of what's happening on the markets uh, this morning, you can get the dollar for 5 cities, 55 pesos, where's the British pound going for 7 cities, 12 pesos, where's the euro, on the other hand, going for 6 cities, 27 pesos. On the commodity market, crude oil open trading at $34.26 a, bar uh, a barrel, rather, after losing $4 yesterday, the precious metal gold went up marginally uh, to sell at $1,635.96 an ounce. Cocoa increased by $48 to open trading at $2,625 a ton. And that's it for the Joy Business Report this morning. My name is Daryl Kwao, and this is your election headquarters. This is Joy 99.7 FM, also the Joy News Channel. And of course, we are live on myjoyonline.com. Is the launch of our election headquarters on the theme Building an Informed Electorate. The stage is set. We'll move now to the Accra Metropolitan Assembly headquarters, where my colleague Mama Vio Uswabwaj and, of course, Daniel Dazia on standby with the newspaper review. Uh, this business district, and this is the Accra Metropolitan Assembly City Hall, is the AM show. And the Super Morning Show combined is our big day because we're launching our election headquarters. My name is Mama Vio Swabwaje. And I am Daniel Dazi. The theme for this year's election headquarters, as you know, election headquarters is a household name here in Ghana. That's the name we give to all our election programming. And our theme this year is building an informed electorate. We are focused on ensuring that we who will cast the ballot you and i uh, will be will understand all the issues no matter the sector uh, that concern us so we can make an informed decision when we are casting our ballot of course we have to thank uh, our friends who help us bring you the weather report to ct general sg ghana the future is you the 6 a.m news to tell petroleum to tell we go the extra mile for you and absa Bank Ghana Limited, helping you find a way to get things done. Um, Darrell came through with a joint business report and that was brought to you by Cal Bank for it together. Malcolm, 
where Ghana shops. Now, Carl Bank wants you to know that it's a new day. It's the dawn of a new hope. It's filled with possibilities of forming new partnerships, of realizing new dreams and achieving unattained successes. We're asking you to join the Carl Bank family as we celebrate 30 years of service and sustainable growth. Let's partner you take advantage of today's opportunities. The number to call is 0800-500-500, toll free, or go on cowbank.net. You can also go on our LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Let's build our dreams together. We're going to begin with the news review, but wherever you are, if you are anywhere around uh, the AMA City Hall here, we are just around Kimball Senior High School, opposite Kimball Senior High School. The road to Tudu is directly opposite us. I can see the traffic. People are getting ready to go to work. Um, people are trying to stop a few trotters here and there. You can join us. Put in a word or two. Tell us what will inform your vote come December 7, 2020. It's time for me to introduce my friends joining us for the news review brought to you by Interplast. Wherever you are, we make sure water reaches you, even in space. First Atlantic Bank, refreshingly different. Now, of course, First Atlantic Bank, FAB, has introduced a set of mobile banking applications and a USSD short code, star 442 hash, for banking transactions. You can download the First Atlantic Bank Ghana mobile app from Google Play Store or simply dial star 442 hash for all your mobile money transactions, instant funds transfer, payments of bills, purchase of airtime or data on Airtel, Tigo, MTN, Glow and Vodafone and many more. We call it the purple experience on mobile. It's safe, secure and very simple to use. First Atlantic Bank, refreshingly different. Now, you already know Mama V is here, but joining us as well to do the news review, the morning man Kojo Yangsen and head of political death Evans Mensa. The evening man. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. It's an exciting time, isn't it, Evans? Absolutely exciting times. I, I just love this location. I mean, it's, it's, um, I've been to many, many places to do live shows. This is probably one of the most... Uh, um, it's in touch with people. The most in touch with the people place I've been. I mean, you start to talk about Kimbo. This is an area I used to play. I used to stay just across the street from Madabraka. Okay. You know, we used to walk to, you know, there, there's a rubbish heap, you know, <laughs> so far away from here. I'm uh, sure it's still there. Yeah, I'm sure it's still there. You can see that <laughs> I, I saw a few minutes ago a huge truck uh, carrying a load of uh, yam, you know, yeah. just making its way, I guess, into Mokola. And it's Tema Station just right behind us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then there is Mokola this way. Mavi should know this better. I'm sure Mavi can. I do. I do. Place to shop I'll walk there after the show, Ted. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. <laughs> and we're not just here, I must say. We'll be across the country. We'll go to Kumasi. Um, there's a setup at Lekma as well. There's also a setup at Kantamanto. Yeah. I'm really yes. looking forward to the Kantamanto one because that's, uh, remember Kanta? That's where we, I used to go for the bend down boutique. 5 a.m. on <laughs> 5 a Saturday a. morning. You call it first election. Bro, you know, bro. First election. First election. Okay. Evans has Baller Diaries, Ben Down. <laughs> There's nobody more gone than Evans. You know, this but is my just, hood. I'm back it, in my it hood. It illustrates know. how much in touch with the people, as you said, that this show is designed to be. I can't wait to get started. Exactly. So let's bring them the front pages of the newspapers now. Mama V, let's start. So I'll do the Chronicle and the New Independence. Front page of the Chronicle, petrol prices to go down by 15%. We believe that the next price in window from what we can uh, we have seen the movement of petroleum product prices. We are likely to see something within the range of 15% reduction. So that's all coming from the NPA boss. Also on the front page, fight against coronavirus is for all according to the president. We will prosecute Howard Kumsen over one village, one dam. That's attributed to the NDC. Uh, and then uh, the new independence. Uh, before we go, I? I think Evans has a new crusading okay. guide. Yes, right? I do. Crusading guide obviously also leads with the uh, Kufado pumps 100 million into it. Uh, but there's an interesting story on the front page also. Uh, since today is the launch of election headquarters, Alote Jacobs, uh, he's a man, he never disappoints. He's revealing that um, there, uh, there's a plot within the NDC to undermine JM. So uh, the crusading guide captures it as Alote Jacobs drops bombshell reviews plot to undermine JM. Also on the front page of the new crusading guide, um, delay in justice delivery affecting fight against corruption. Uh, that is GII. All right, I have the Daily Statesman, and again, banner headline, $100 million uh, to boost coronavirus fight. Also on the front page this morning, Mahama in serious danger. Uh, people around him plot 2020 defeat to advance agenda 2024. Same Alute Jacobs story. And also in the top left corner, three giants pursue giant killer. Will Akwetia, NPP, rescue Amase? 
another apt story for today's election headquarters launch. And we'll be going into all those stories, but of course, every story is an election story here in Ghana <laughs> because it affects governance, it affects how we vote. Uh, the most popular story this morning, obviously, is the COVID-19 address that the president made last night. I love the way the lady graphic puts it. It says, $100 million awaits COVID-19. President states <laughs> in Nation Broadcast. It's like the money is waiting for. Yeah. At Kotuka. <laughs> anyway. <Yeah. laughs> Ghana increases food exports in the top right corner of the daily graphic. Accrues 868 million Ghana cities in five years. ECG to buy local cables. And Kojo Paul Kroma, um, information minister, named among young global leaders. Yeah. The back page says Garden City Mall to be ready by end of the year. And First Lady presents business startups to women in Central Region. Yeah, right. I mean, I, I, f I forgot to do this headline on the Daily Guy uh, newspaper. The Kintampo accident. Uh, Kintampo accident driver was dozing. It's a story that we, we broke a few days ago when yeah. we spoke to that eyewitness. There's also 11 institutions signed anti corruption pact. There's this curious story about the Auditor General. I mean, as the very Daily Guy like headline chopped 350,000 get fund uh, cash and then DC's house beggar. So let me finally do the new independent newspaper. Front page, the controversy over one village, one dam. Will Prosecutor Kofuado and Co. submit Jemfi charges and confusion rocks NDC. Agenda 2024 plot against Mahama exposed. Alote Jacob's lead charge to flash out uh, dissidents from party. So the two main headlines on the front page of the new independent. Kojo? Right, my final paper is a business finder and fintechs welcome deadline extension and commit to deeper engagement with Bank of Ghana is the banner headline. Also on the front page, $100 million voted for coronavirus preparedness, uh, according to the president. One district, one factory. Uh, government commissions noodles factory. Wow, Ghana Indomie. I can't wait to try that. Uh, yeah. My son is obsessed with that thing. Uh, you are too, aren't you? I am. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah. I think it's the, it went the other way, the infection. I, I you know. know I, from I, father from to him son. to me. No, no, no. From father to are son. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> I get text messages from Indomi. That's how bad it is. Okay. Uh, also, uh, uh, Opon Krumah named Young Global Leader yeah. is on the front page I of saw the business finder. I saw from the president um, congratulating him on Twitter. Oh, yeah, yeah nice. with, a, with a picture. I mean, I, I, I mentioned it on Newsnight yesterday. And, and for me, Steve, look at the people that have also been appointed. The Finland um, uh, you know, PM, for example, is there. The high-profile individual. Yeah. It's good wow. for him. If, if you see a young former colleague of ours yeah. I mean, doing well, getting appointed to such a prestigious position, mm. it, it's, just, it's just a good one. So, well, so, so on that note, me. we say congratulations to him. Congratulations <laughs> yeah. to Joe Paul Nkrumah. Ghanaian oh. Times is the final newspaper. Uh, it has that story of um, Ghana's preparedness for COVID-19 battle. Uh, Adaklu Jako residents held hostage after a severe rainstorm. It also has an update from the WHO on coronavirus. You know, it's now been declared a pandemic. And this is a story Kojo Yangsen will not love to hear. Five Wege students sweep 2019 WASI Best Performance Awards. Oh. Uh, five out of seven <laughs> awardees are from Wesley Girls High School. One out of the other two is from a fancy school, Kojo. <laughs> Where are the Augusta boys? Back page of Ghanaian Times. They we're busy winning NSM. Hearts tear only apart. Only in console, console. Oh, it didn't wow. work. Only four zero. Only coronavirus. That's it. <laughs> uh, it's okay. If, for us, for even if you say Colona. <laughs> <That's Yes. fine. laughs> Ask God Wafa Safa uh, Home. Police coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kotoko, play sharks today. And Liberty hosts Inter Allies. Let's get into the details. And obviously, that coronavirus. Um, no address doubt. It's in every start. paper this morning. And, uh, and the president talked about how this 100 million. Uh, dollars, which would uh, translate into some 540 million Ghana cities, is supposed to be spent on uh, expansion of infrastructure, uh, as well as purchase of materials and equipment, and public education. Now, there have been many complaints about how there is a dearth of public education uh, since this coronavirus matter became an, a global issue. Mm. Um, so now we're going to see some money spent on that public education. On my way to work today, I saw uh, a billboard, an electronic billboard next to Jubilee House, where they were giving tips on how to stay safe. Uh, also, uh, the president talked about how uh, the WHO's uh, upgrading mm. of the, the coronavirus to a pandemic 
has also sparked some of the activity that Ghana is now going to undertake. So uh, he talks about how uh, the alarming levels of spread and the alarming levels of inaction, which is the uh, WHO's concern, are now being responded to by the government of Ghana. So he says it's going to be a whole of Ghana approach. We're not going to just be focusing on metropolitan areas, but we're going to make sure that wherever you are, if you're a Ghanaian, you are close enough to some uh, resources mm. that can help if the coronavirus uh, becomes an issue in your part of I, the country. I must say, though, uh, Kojo, that yes, this is a purely possibly scientific medical issue. Mm. But around the world, in many countries, it's also playing out politically. And mm. again, in keeping with today, I was watching the U.S. and how Trump is handling this. It's become a Democrat versus Republican. Yeah. The Democrats think Trump is not doing enough to attack the problem and that he's taking it for granted. Trump obviously thinks otherwise. Mm. Locally, in times of crisis, as coronavirus is trying to, is trying to um, sort of project, leaders emerge. Anybody forget what happens when um, ha the hurricane hit New York and others? Yeah. At the time, Barack Obama was there. Yeah. It, it, he rolled on the back of that crisis to show leadership. Um, Mayor Bloomberg. Um, um, also Michael Bloomberg, Michael who Bloomberg, later became you know, a also wrote, Democratic uh, candidate. Even uh, President Obama's um, lawyer now, who used to be the, the at the time in New York when the 9/11 happened. Yeah. yeah. My point here is. The president did a national address. It's rare for a president to do a national address unless it's a crisis. Mm. In an election year, these things play out. The optics alone are important. What are you doing? Is it enough money? Remember that in parliament, it's played out politically. Mm. The MD MDC keeps saying, you are not doing enough. You are not yeah. prepared. So it's unfortunate, but it's very well understandable within a but, season like this. But I yeah. don't think it's turned very political in Ghana, which is a good thing. We're not well, doing a lot of... Not as bad know, as the U.S., exactly. I agree. Yeah. But it's, yeah. still, it's still playing out. And I remember one of the major issues a few weeks ago was flying down the Ghanaian residents in Wuhan. And yeah. you know South Africa has taken that move as of yesterday. Mm. 160 people have been brought back. And it's out of 180 people who wanted to mm. come back. Uh, and they've been brought back from China. It's interesting that that is happening now because China is now seeing a dip in new infections every day. In fact, one of the days this week, it was just 19 cases that was reported. Mm. And so it's interesting that that move is being taken now. Talking so, about global crises, a few years ago, the Bring Back Our Girls issue actually changed matter. the government in Nigeria. It's one of the Good main issues. Time, they say, lost yes. that election and that was the that. first time that the PDP lost an you know, election. You we're asking, what will influence your vote? If you many Ghanaians stuck in China, mm. what would influence your vote? Mm. I'm pretty sure mm. that will be... And I'm sure but for a lot of Ghanaians here, a big deal you see, in the end, all that will matter is how it turns out. You know, the yeah. final result is what will determine how people uh, judge how this government has managed the global crisis. Now, the president is looking out for opportunities to turn it into a positive. He says that uh, we must take advantage of the crisis to strengthen our domestic productive capacity so that we can advance our self-reliance and reduce our dependence on foreign imports. He says necessity, they say, is the mother of invention. So if that turns out to be a reality, that because of this and the locking down of uh, uh, economies and states across the world, we turn out to be more of a productive nation, then it will turn out to be uh, a plus on, but on the side of the government. That as well, and I'll take you to page three of the Daily Graphic newspaper, Kojo. Between 2015 and 2019, Ghana raked in 868.13 million Ghana cities from exports of foodstuffs to our neighboring countries. I'm talking about Togo, Burkina Faso, La Côte d'Ivoire, and a number of countries within the West African enclave. It's important that we look at this figure, Evans, because now coronavirus has been reported in all the three countries um, surrounding Ghana. And so our borders will be tighter. We already saw what, saw what happened to traders when Nigeria closed its borders and was not allowing anyone, for instance, to bring rice into the country. And so we need to begin looking at its effect on us. I'll, I'll tell you something. Burkina Faso topped in the importation of varied foodstuffs like rice, Popor, palm fruit, sorghum, cowpea. This is coming from the farmers. And remember, the Planting for Food and Jobs program actually saw some success to the extent that farmers had too much produce and they weren't getting enough market. And the international market would have been the best way. So yes, the coronavirus may boost our productive capacity locally, but it also means 
that for the eight the, the 133,508 tons that was exported in the year 2019, we may see a drop in yeah. that figure. Well, it depends. You see, if we end up managing the condition better than our neighboring countries, then there will be a certain reliance on what we produce. At the moment, Burkina Faso brings so much food into Ghana. The accident that happened on the Kintampo Highway, one of the vehicles in the Yutong bus was filled with food, some of it coming from Burkina Faso. Yeah. So the reality is that at the moment, our food consumption is partly dependent on what's happening in Burkina Faso. If they don't succeed in managing the outbreak as well as they, they could, it will affect us and we will be forced to fill in that gap with okay. our own production. Let's move away from the subjects. Mama V, I think petrol price is the, some good news oh, coming from there. Well, Also, almost reacting uh, to the NDC fee and OPEC. So he says in the next window, when they review, which is uh, like on the 16th of this March, we will probably see a reduction. He's given a figure, which is 15%. So that will be good news to all of us, I guess, because there's a lot of pressure from everybody. We see the prices coming down on the market, and we want to see that reflect. So hopefully, that will reflect. Mm, I mean, this one is a big political issue. I'm telling there you. There is, remember the NDC issued a statement just last week? Yeah. Demanding a reduction. Mm. The, the, right, the next day is when the MPA reacted and said, 15% is going is to go down. Yeah. Petrol affects everybody. This is where we are. Look, all these vehicles that are passing in front of us, people going into Mokala, the market women who are transporting um, yam from wherever, it affects them because mm. the vehicle transporting the yam, the cassava, all the things that we are seeing, they will add an extra bit onto the cost of transportation. Mm. My mommy says when she finishes she's going to the market, mm. it's possible that that, if it goes down, but that's Ghana, right? Because when you see a reduction, it doesn't necessarily have the no. same But you have effect. the expectation. You're yeah, expecting I mean, that it will reflect. Fact, everyone, but yeah. but how many times is that expectation borne out? How many times have you gone to a shop and been told that this is now cheaper because, because of some decision made by government? That's the thing. And you, I'm see, you see, I'm curious about the decision that the government has made. Why 15%? What went into that calculation? What are they preserving? If the global price has come down by 30%, what are they preserving that other 15% for? Oh, is it taxes? Uh, you're too mean. Uh, no, no, to be fair. No, let, <laughs> me, let me ask. Let me ask. So, and and when, when, I, when I go to the shop, how is the shopkeeper going to calculate the reduction in the cost of my toothpaste because petrol is now 15% cheaper? How will it work out? And will there even be a reduction? So, you see, there are so many factors in this entire petrol price mm. mix. Remember in 2015, when we had that global slump in oil prices, it was projected to go down as low as $20 per barrel at a point. Seth Tekpe, who was then finance minister, introduced a price mitigation levy and said that let's put in this levy so that we can rake back the gains because they had benchmarked the, then the price per barrel for gaining revenue at $53 per barrel. Mm. So with the price going up, it means we weren't getting enough oil funds. So they taxed the petrol to get their money back. This year, the benchmark is $60 per barrel. I don't know what the reaction of Mr. Ken Oforiata like, and government will be. Uh, the fantastic analysis, but the people in where we are sitting, they don't really care with <laughs> the $10,000 a barrel per oil. I mean, I have we have market reps in, in, in front of yeah. us. You should yeah. ask them what she thinks. She just wants to see the reduction, 15%. She wants to see when she goes to Makalan right mm -hmm. next year, or Tema Station, or Kantamantu, where will be shortly. She can buy her, uh, you know, her usual... But Evans, question, for question, less. question. That is what I guess. Eventually, mm. when we go to... We'll, we'll test it. We'll influence people's votes. So the 15% is big, provided it, it can trickles down pockets in Kantamantu. But yeah. that's a question. When area. it increases every two weeks, because for most of the reviews, you see an increase. When it increases, do we see an immediate effect? Because the pricing for transport fares is reviewed twice a year, January and July. Yeah, but so my point is, in this election year, mm. government must make sure, whatever they do, I don't know how they're going to fix it, but that <laughs> reduction, they have to make sure that it translates. Because the NDC will capitalize and say, yeah, I mean, you said 15% reduction, so what does that mean? I haven't seen it in my pocket. So let's track the money. The, the fuel is now 15% cheaper. 
so I that think it will be. It's not yet. It's All right. Not yet. So, not so, yet. So, so, yeah. so, so it will be fifteen percent cheaper. Mm. The, the the truck driver will go and fill his tank and pay fifteen percent less. Then he will go and collect the yam and bring it to the market. No, will he bring it here where we are. Will he charge the, the seller fifteen percent less? <laughs> that's a question. Has he actually I said, that's a question. Can, 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 can we know what's we have just been naughty? Yeah, exactly. We have we have just been naughty. <laughs> Queen Mother of Tema Station yeah. Market. Let's ask her. Uh, Honorable Mercy now Froa Nijan. She's president of the Greater Accra Markets Association. Yeah, let's say we said I'm wise here. Um First of all, Winston, good morning to you yourself. Um, yeah, good morning, Daniel. Uh -huh, this time you decided to take a back seat a bit and listen. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Nice. So who do you have sitting by you? And um, let's hear her. Well, I have a market queen seated by me, and she'll be telling us um, whether indeed mm. that 15% that you guys are talking about would be reflected in the marketplace. It's very, very important. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is Mesina Pruanijan president of the Greater Accra Markets Association. I'm highly interested in what you are discussing <laughs> because petrol decides everything in the market. From the market woman leaving the house into the market transport fare. So if the transport fare is high, it means whatever the market woman is going to do, it is an additional cost. Mm -hmm. So if there is a reduction in petrol, really it will affect the prices in the market with the idea that if you go to Edra for yams and formerly the fare is 100 Ghana, now because of the petrol reduction the fare is 80 Ghana, naturally it will reflect on the goods you bring right. down here. Mm. But what marvels me a lot is immediately you want to buy petrol, you go to a filling station, no petrol. You go there, no fuel. Here, no diesel. It means something is going to happen. Before the increment, they have already stopped mm. selling. Mm. Waiting for the exact time that the government will announce the increment. But why is it that when there is a reduction, it takes people to plead to appeal to knock doors before the reduction is done. That's a very good observation. How come? How come? Mm, mm, it mm. is high, the price is high. We do on it is low, let the price come down so that we all enjoy. Because if the goods in the market are expensive, people can buy. Mm. And at least we lose our profit, we lose our capital. So bring that thing to the standard okay. so that at the end of the day we'll right. be able to make our market make our profit so that we will be able to look after you and your children exactly Thank so you. that when Thank mamavi you. comes to the market <laughs> and when i come to the market as well because i try i try so and we, that's messy now for one nijan she's president of the greater Accra market association giving us some real market economics here yeah. um so we'll you, keep you, you can't learn it at Harvard. so because all this is it could be 15% when the date comes for okay. uh, for that price to be adjusted. Mm. All right. right. Um, you're still live on the Super Morning Show and the AM Show. If you're listening to us, this is Joy 99.7 FM. This is also the Joy News Channel on Multi TV. My name is Daniel Dazi here at Mama V. Oswa Boaji. My colleagues Evan Spencer and Kojo Yangsen are here as we are having the news review. It's the launch of election headquarters. That means we are. Um, we are unveiling the gamut of programs that we will be rolling out this year as we count down to December 7, 2020. Our theme is building an informed electorate. Uh, it's geared towards uh, Mama V helping I'm in, everyone understand. I'm in everybody else with a lot of information in this election year. And can I say that we're also, this is breakfast really. So we're inviting, if you're listening and you're watching, we would love for you to be a part of our program this morning in the center uh, the business district. district. Why Central can't I get it together? <laughs> opposite Kim. Opposite Kim. Okay, so I'll yeah. say opposite Kim. She's thinking of the Yam Demar. <laughs> City Hall. City Hall. Come over to City Hall. <laughs> City Hall. Okay. The online news review is brought to you by Zenith Bank in your best interest and Goyle Good Energy. It's time for consumers to smile. Goyle has released onto the market a higher grade Super XP Roll 95 for all consumers. From now on, all girls' service stations are offering higher grade Super XP Roll 95 at no extra cost to our cherished customers. 
consumers no longer need to pay more for any higher grade petrol specification, so you save money by buying Goyle's higher grade Super XP. Visit any Goyle station and experience less vibration and less noise from your engines as well as better fuel economy for your vehicles at the same price. Choosing the right fuel is an important feature in maintaining your vehicle. Choosing the right petrol, choose Goyle. Goyle Good Energy, Goyle Yenara. Yet, yeah, dear. Uh, so we'll, we'll take a quick breather now. Uh, for those of you listening to us on Joy FM, we'll go for the Nestle Nutrition Line immediately. We apologize. We're unable to bring you the BBC News at 7 um, because of our special programming. Uh, and so we'll go for the Nestle Nutrition Line uh, after this quick batch of messages. And Mama V on the AM show. Well, we'll bring you uh, a lot more, uh, you know, on, on this election as well. So we've got special packaging that we'll be playing when we go on our breaks, when we're not here. But we'll bring you sports as well. Beautiful. Uh, stay with us. This is the Super Morning Show and the AM Show. Well, you're welcome back. Uh, for those of you watching television, well, we shared with you the issues on the hearts of people, what is most important to them in this election year, and of course, it's Ghana Month. So we're sharing some historical sites with you as well on the Joy News channel. And Daniel, for those listening on radio... Welcome back from the Nestle Nutrition line. Of course, uh, our friends, Fidelity Bank, believe with us, Shell Club, get more. would like to apologize to you for being unable to bring you the BBC News at 7. You can understand uh, it's a special day today. We are launching our election headquarters here at the AMA City Hall in the Central Business District of Accra. We are directly opposite Kimbo Senior High School. Um, to do is just down the road. Tema Station is just behind us. Uh, we are in the middle of the hustle and bustle of so uh, those going to work in Accra, going to the market. Uh, so join us if you at the AMS City Hall, take a seat. Uh, we've already been joined by a number of our guests, including Ibrahim Tanko Amidu, Executive Director for Star Ghana. He has an important role to play today. We'll be telling you a bit later. But the word together means being united in a common goal. In unity lies our collective Ghanaian strength. When people are connected, they agree on what to do and how to do it. They act together to achieve a unified purpose. Now, at Fidelity Bank, our success is driven by belief that Working with you, we can do amazing things because together, there's so much more. You and Fidelity Bank working together to achieve your goals. Fidelity Bank, believe with us. And Mama B, it's time for sports. Absolutely, it's time for the Sports Center. It's brought to you by MTN. Choose your own bundle, your own way with MTN Flexi Bundle. Just dial star 138 hash and enjoy bundles that don't expire. And of course, Standard Chartered Bank here for good. So the internet is like a highway for your business. Have you ever spent hours downloading your business files or missed a tight deadline because of your unreliable internet? Now that could be a potential opportunity out the window. With MTN Business, your business cruises on the most reliable, high-speed, secure, dedicated internet service here in Ghana. Plus, we offer round-the-clock technical support customized just for your business needs. So call 0244-308-111 if you live in Kanishi, Abusokai, Dan, Sumantantra Hills, Abilinkpe, and Achimotori. 
0208-308-111. Or you can also, um, you know, get online and get a mo lot more information. Terms and conditions apply. That's all you must know. And uh, so what do you uh, caught biking in the desert? Have you ever experienced caught biking in the desert? Nice beaches and lot shopping centers have in common. What do they all have in common? That's a big question. Have you ever fancied a holiday in Dubai, Daniel? I have. I have. <laughs> which is why Standard Chartered is going to help me out. Right? Absolutely. So now it's really simple. Get yourself a Standard Chartered Visa debit or credit card and use it to pay for your meals, fuel, shopping fees and any transaction and take a closer step to that Dubai trip. The more you transact from now until 15th of March, which is just around the corner, the better your chances of winning the ultimate prize, which is an all-expense-paid trip to Dubai with your partner. You could also win any of the over 1,000 monthly prizes, including a new iPhone 11 Pro, 40-inch TV, and DSTV subscription, or DSTV decoders with a monthly subscription. It just gets better with Standard Chartered. Just make sure you get yourself a Standard Chartered Visa debit or credit card and start swiping to win big. Mm. Visit any of our branches or log on to sc.com to apply. Terms and conditions apply. Standard Chartered, here yeah, for good. For Introducing. Good. The Joy Sports <laughs> Center, which is also live on the AM show today. And George Addo Jr. and yeah. Benedict yeah. also are here. Yeah. Yeah, but we can't have this for uh -huh. Of course, this of course, here, of course. <laughs> so let me clear my throat. So, so, so how does it go, George? It's a K, 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 on the AM show, better. I think you know what, <laughs> Mama V, let's try it. <laughs> no, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's, no, like no, no. Cup of coffee no. Yes, let, let me do it. Let me do it, Mama V. Mama v, so Mama v, let's start. I need support, no, guys. Daniel and George, please. K, 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 the thing is, are you, are you guys okay? Yeah, I'm very okay. If you know you your sure? worth, oh, I'm, I'm super fine. You if know you, your worth? Yeah, if you know your worth. Yeah, yesterday, what happened in the game was, I knew we were going to lose. You, you know, knew? Yeah, of course. He <laughs> didn't tell me so that. No, it, it, gets to, it, gets to a time, it gets to a time if you're a fan of a team, okay, and things are not going well, at least it don't so. It's considered goals against Chelsea in the uh, FA Cup. He considered two goals, which... Uh, a world-class goalkeeper she shouldn't not. concede goals not. like that. You, you, he's not. He's no, not. That, that's so, what I'm saying. So if if you had, if Allison was in, it's not the game. You know, it's not the game. If Alisson was in post yesterday, it would have been a different thing altogether. Well, because okay. Liverpool, <laughs> Liverpool are the no, Liverpool are the points. We're in the league. Alisson, no, but you have to give credit no, no, to Atletico no, no, Madrid. No, no, Alisson, no, no, no. I'm not, I'm not taking it away from Atletico Madrid. Single-handedly, yes. Alisson Becker single-handedly moved us to the Champions yeah. League qualifiers uh, last season. No problem. Yeah, you, you know well, the save. The yeah. save against Napoli. You remember that save? That last minute. That save against Napoli. That was what. That was that was what actually won Liverpool the UEFA Champions League last season. But it's fine. So now we don't waste too much time on the Champions League. I think it's okay. You are out. <laughs> we'll sort you guys out. <laughs> we'll sort you guys out. Liverpool out of the Champions League. And then next week, we're going to come away with two um, special sets of games. Yeah. We'll see the likes of Real Madrid, Manchester City, Barcelona, Napoli. Big game. Big, big game. Games, trying to do it out. And there's always live commentary on Joy 99.7 FM. So then, give us a little an update of what coronavirus has done to other sporting competitions. And this time, the coronavirus seems to be affecting big competitions like what the NBA and the USA yeah the NBA they actually suspended it you know the prayer of some Manchester United fans yeah. Chelsea fans that they suspend the English League, so <laughs> Liverpool do not win it yes. the NBA has been suspended yeah. because one player of Utah has been you know uh, diagnosed of coronavirus uh, yeah. he's positive so yeah. they've suspended the NBA uh, FIFA you know they, they 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 were scheduled to hold their Congress here in Africa in yes. Ethiopia that's also been called off yeah. uh, to September uh, some Europa League matches involving Italian and Spanish teams also called off uh, the Manchester United last uh, Lens game, uh, which will be uh, tonight, tonight, will be behind closed doors because of coronavirus. And yeah. CAF yesterday released a statement that uh, despite the issues of coronavirus, we'll they will go ahead with the, uh, qualifiers. the qualifiers of the Africa Cup of Nations as well as uh, the Chan uh, 2021 in Cameroon. So um, it's, it's affecting everything. And it's it's affecting on. everything. Let's right talk about the Ghana on. Premier League. We saw games uh, last yes, night. The biggest yeah. game was the Accra Hearts of Oak, Accra Great Manchester. Oh, only that they only go Oli 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 Say there was a storm yesterday. There was a storm. <laughs> 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 Oli Bobo. Oli Bobo. <laughs> Oli, Bobo. <laughs> Oli Election Headquarters. I spoke to one. Oli AMB City Hall. Yeah. Oli 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 Oli
<laughs> no, no. And I, spoke, I spoke to one Oli fan and he says that we lost by four goals to nail. It's just a result. He asked me the question, Hearts to Folk, have they won the title? I said no. They may not win it. <laughs> and, they, and this is actually the first time uh, Hearts to Folk have won that, you know, massive Huge margin, margin. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, against the Olympics. And you know what? Yesterday, the Olympics Twitter handle yeah. tweeted that they were the landlords of Accra. of Accra. And after the game, they tweeted a scoreline. 4-0 against Accra go to Olympics and there was a reply to that tweet that you still have the nerve, the infantry to tweet after that 4 0 dropping at the Accra Stadium. So the guy asked, so who are the royal landlords? You know what the Olympics stand or what, what they what tweeted? Is it? Hear me. Hear me. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why we are here. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Just, just wrapping up the Ghana Premier League. Yeah. Interesting results as well. Yeah. 20 like, seconds. Um, yeah, in 20 seconds, yeah. Like, Media like Mercy beat 11 when there's 2 0. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Kim Faisal yeah. were on the verge of winning their very first yeah. game of the season, but yeah. that didn't happen. They lost 2 1. And then Adriana Bechim Stars. United yeah. went away yeah. to win yeah. by two, uh, a goal to 0 at Ashko. Then Indiana right. Stars went to Wafa. And Yam Mohamed scored again and won by a goal to 0. So tonight, there's a Santi Kotoko at the Accra Stadium. They come up against Omina Sharks. That will be a, a loss for Kotoko. Yeah. Just get used and to it. And then there's Liberty to Allies as well. That's it. That's it. Thank you very much, guys. George, <laughs> and Virginia, and Benedict also who brought us a spot. Last game, yeah? You're still live <laughs> on the <laughs> Super Morning Show on Joe 99.7 FM and the AM Show on Multi TV. I'm Daniel Dazi. I'm here with Mama V. Oh, Absolutely. We thank MTN and Standard Chartered Bank for bringing us the Sports Center. When we come back, we'll explain really what we're on. What is new about election headquarters this year, 2020, Daniel? Right. So stay with us for that and join us if you're anywhere around the Accra area. We'll be right back. <laughs>